City councils are feeling the effects of the economic crisis. However, despite cuts to budgets, they remain responsible for ensuring the proper operation of key public services, such as public lighting, highway services, daily waste collection and street cleaning. However, they now have to do it at a significantly lower cost than in recent years, all while implementing new initiatives to boost the economy. Many experts agree that the best way to tackle this is greater public-private cooperation. Looking ahead, there are opportunities. Local governments that in the past may never have outsourced work to the likes of private companies are now looking at private companies to help them deliver the services. So we're seeing opportunities where perhaps we wouldn't have seen that before. Every day, new ideas are put into practice in cities all over the world. Initiatives that demonstrate the concept of smart cities. Examples include how to reduce emissions and the cost of public lighting, while at the same time improving illumination in our streets. How to detect energy efficiency in buildings or entire neighbourhoods in order to optimise usage or how to efficiently manage services while maximising the use of citizen data to drive better services. How to create an environment in which citizens actively participate in and provide information to support improvements for a city's well-being and quality of life. The uh, City Lights project, that is the uh, scanning of lights, we have built a technology version and we've done some prototype testing. You see, the, if you look at technology, technology is often applied to high-tech things. Uh, it is time for cities and countries to become high-tech, to save energy and to be uh, able to provide better service to citizens. Va a suponer, eh, sin duda ninguna, pues un ahorro interesante en, para el ayuntamiento y para todos los vecinos. Estamos hablando de que mm, en eficiencia energética va a rondar lo, el 80% aproximadamente en ahorro energético sin perder la calidad en cuanto a la iluminación. The, there are three phases. One is, it's like medical, it's like going to the doctor. Diagnostics. The diagnostics is already possible, uh, but to do it on large scale needs software and, um, and in infrastructure. Uh, but we already have that and now we're building a version. Uh, the second is construction. Once you figure out where the building is leaking, you have to fix it. And that is a matter of priority that can be done tomorrow. Uh, the savings then accrue over time and uh, you can get them within a year, you can get quite a lot of savings, depending on how bad the problem is. The technology that we have developed is meant to be very inexpensive. Uh, take, for example, a building, and imagine if it's leaking a lot of energy. Now, if you want to find the leaks, it can be very painstaking and expensive. But if you had a magic glasses through which you could see the heat escaping, then you could quickly go fix it, right? So what we are developing is the magic glasses through which you can see the heat escaping. If you have that, the, uh, all there is is savings. The investment is only in the capital and we can figure out which ones to attack first so you can get the maximum savings. It is obvious that the potential for improvement in the energy consumption of buildings, streets and neighbourhoods is really high, as are the advantages as far as generating financial savings reducing emissions and also the proper maintenance of the installations so they last longer. Let the Cities Talk is how Carlo Ratti, director of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Sensible City Lab, summarizes the objective of the Integrated Urban Management Project, an innovative initiative that is currently being developed along with ferrovial services. The strategy is based on integrating major urban services to optimize the use of the resources, energy efficiency, new technologies, and active citizen participation. Uh, you know, one important thing is that today we waste a lot of uh, energy or resources into peaks, uh, into things that are not optimized. And we've got all this information collected from the city, we can actually smooth that. And if you think about that in terms of uh, urban services, then there's a way you can actually give a better service to citizens with a much lower cost. The economic benefits of the partnership with Herefordshire are quite significant, largely in terms of cash generated to the local taxpayer. Since 2003, we've saved, we think, in the order of £22 million. 
and we believe there's potential over the next period um, through the partnership with Amy to save up to another £65 million by 2023. All of that investment can be reinvested in other key local priorities. These savings will allow us to invest in technology to convert waste to energy by generating electricity or even fuel. In Europe, the trend is moving towards all waste going to landfill to the idea of zero waste. Customised traffic systems that select the most efficient means of transport and guide citizens through the city to the best parking space. Streets with electrical recharge points to charge non-polluting vehicles, control screens and real-time data, and an integrated view of the entire city. One example of long-term public-private cooperation is Birmingham Highways and Maintenance Project. The project is generating savings of up to 20%, making it possible to finance new economic development initiatives, increased employment, as well as training for groups at risk of exclusion. In Birmingham, the social benefits of the partnership are that we have now got the opportunity to allow long-term unemployed to gain uh, employment on this long-term contract. We've taken on board over 300 local young people and they are now in gainful employment. We knew how to do cities of, of the past. They were made of uh, concrete, of steel, of glass, of bricks. Uh, but cities of tomorrow will be made of concrete and silicon, or the physical and the digital. And in order to do that, you really need a broad alliance. You need to really bring together the research, together with the cities, and together with industry. And that's why we think, you know, what's going on with uh, both Madrid, Santander, Birmingham, and Ferrovial, and MIT, uh, can really allow incredible experimentation. I mean, I think Ferrovial already is a big innovator that uh, really, uh, you know, changes the way how uh, a very traditional uh, service uh, has been delivered for, for many decades, but it's already now very, very different and much, uh, yeah, more more agile. Um, yeah, the, the new role can be much more of uh, marshalling knowledge and, and applying it uh, in a real-time way, which is which hasn't been done by anyone before, really. So this can be uh, a new field. Mm -hmm.